Hi, my name is Sarah John. I'm a part of the Emory Community Critical Care Division. So we're going to be talking to you about chest tube fundamentals. Um, I've not been this close, just not been yet. So we're going to be talking about, uh, spending a few minutes talking about, you know, what are the basics of the chest tube vagus system? Where did this originate? Um, how does it work? And troubleshoot the chest tube a little bit in terms, uh, particularly in terms of uh, when you have a large area. So just a quick overview, in a normal lung, you have this constant type of work that happens between your lung elastic recoil and your chest wall recoil. What this does is keeps the lung from collapsing inward, and the chest wall from expanding outward. As you can guess, when someone has a pneumothorax, there's air in the pleural space, your lung elastic recoil wins, and you collapse of your lung. Right? So the whole concept of putting in a chest tube is to relieve this and get back to your normal state. So how do we do that? So what we're going to do in the next few minutes is learn how to build a chest tube. Um, well, at least in theory. So since we're in Atlanta, we're going to be in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> so we're going to start here. You find yourself in this warehouse. And I'm going to give you four things to build this chest tube. You're going to get a tube with some holes in it, a few stoppers, some straws, and some bottles. How do we do that, right? Well, the first system that came about was a one-bottle system. The concept of putting in a chest tube is to drain air out of the lung, but you don't want air to get back in. So we need a one-way system that layer, lets air out but not back in. So what do you do? Well, you hook up um, a chest tube to the straw that's submerged in water. And the air comes out, bubbles through, there's a little vent in the system to prevent pressure buildup in this bottle, and it lets air out into the atmosphere. This is great if there's no fluid drainage along with that. Fortunately, over time, you're going to have this level of water is going to go up, which is going to increase the resistance for uh, the lung to get rid of the air, right? So imagine just blowing some bubbles in a glass. If you have the glass just filled a little bit, it's going to be a lot easier to blow bubbles. But what if the glass is all the way up? What if it's filled to the brim? It's going to be much harder to blow into that. Well, they fix this problem by adding what's called a collection bottle. So what happens here is this is connected to the chest tube. The fluid collects here so you know what's draining and how much is draining. Air rises up goes into a water seal bottle and out into the atmosphere. So this serves two purposes, right? So one, we know how much fluid is draining, what's happening there. But it also keeps the water seal at a constant level. So this is great. It works by gravity. You place these bottles on the floor, patients up, and air flows from higher pressure to lower pressure. But in cases where you have a larger air leak, a lot of fluid, you need some extra suction. So that then gave rise to this three bottle system. What they did was just add another suction bottle. So same concept, fluid drains, air rises up, bubbles through, and then you have your suction control. The reason this bottle needs to be controlled is too much suction is also bad. It can cause a hematoma at the distal end of the chest tube. It can cause the tissue to invaginate to, through those holes in the chest tube. What this does is the uh, length to which the straw is submerged in water is the amount of suction that lungs going to see. So no matter what you turn your wall suction up to, this is going to stay constant. So this is a great system. Why not just use this? Well, when it's fully put together, this comes out to about 17 different parts, 18 including your chest tube, 19 with the patient. So this includes, obviously it takes a while to set up, um, there's a high potential for error and uh, higher risk of contamination. So in 1967, they came up with um, this calibrated collection bottle. Or, um, so it's the same concept as before. You have your collection chamber, you have your air leak chamber, and then the suction control. The issue with this is the water needs to be constant to exert a constant level of suction. So over time, if you have too much suction or the water can evaporate, you just have to keep a closer eye on that. So this is where we are now. So this is the box, the little disposable box that you find at the bedside. 
um, and they're in your collection chamber, your suction control. So this is a dry suction. There's no water that's needed. It's set at negative 20, and then you hook it up to suction, and you have your water seal chamber. And what you look for here are bubbles. So we're looking for air leaks, right? What does that mean? How do we monitor for those? So initially when you're putting in a chest tube, um, you're gonna have some air that leaks out of the lung, but this should get better over time, um, where you'll have intermittent bubbling with coughing or with exhalation. What if there's continuous bubbling? Well, then, that's, then you have an air leak. And the way to monitor that is you have this little calibrated thing at the bottom, it runs from one to five, five being the highest, and where you have the most bubbles is where you're starting off and you monitor that over time. So now that we have an air leak, how do we detect this? So I'd say the easiest way to do this is remove the dressing and sort of pinch the skin around the insertion site. If that stops your um, bubbling, then you apply some Vaseline gauze and redress that area. If that doesn't work, the next thing you can do is plant the chest tube near the insertion site. If that stops your bubbling, then you know that it, this is coming from your patient um, and this, there's a still a leak, either um, they have a bronchopleural fistula or you just need to have some more time on suction. And the last thing you can do is basically inch down the tube and clamp it till your air leak stops. So if this happens, then if, there's, if it stops while you're inching down the tube, then you can tape the tube and redress it. Or sometimes there could be a crack in the drainage system and you might just have to replace the box. So to finish up, um, the three bottle system is what we have right now as this one piece disposable box at the bedside. What we're looking for is continuous bubbling, which indicates an air leak. Suction's great, but uh, too much suction can also prolong your air leaks, can cause hematoma, and um, also damage to the lung tissue. Thank you.